Hello from all of us at Biomimicry 3.8. Every year we celebrate life's birthday and we would love it if you celebrated with us as well. You'll see that when we compress the age of our planet into one calendar year, life appears on February 25th. And we homo sapiens have only been around for a mere 24 minutes on December 31st. So just what happened during all of those other months? It starts when Earth was born on January 1st. Earth was a sea of molten rock because of frequent collisions with other bodies. But during the month of January, Earth will start to cool and form a solid crust, allowing water to exist on the surface. Then, it's not until the end of February that life springs forth in Earth's extreme environments, such as hot springs and deep sea vents. Granted, life just appeared as simple cells at this point, but nonetheless, February 25th is a holiday here at Biomimicry 3.8 because it's life's birthday and birthdays are never something to miss. On to March 21st when photosynthesis evolves. Now after this day, pay attention because the next evolutionary leap isn't until July. That's a huge jump in the calendar where it was just algae, stromatolites, and bacteria dominating the scene for these first few months. So jumping all the way to July 15th, when nucleated cells propagate. Animals and plants are among those made up of nucleated cells, or as our species likes to call them, eukaryotes. The latest diversity estimate predicts there are 9 million eukaryotic species on Earth, 86% of which are still unidentified. Of course, what fun would this talk about evolution be without the mention of sexual reproduction? Around 1.3 billion years ago, sexual reproduction started mixing genes and paved the way for Earth's amazing diversity of life that we'll start to see pop up. So for us nature lovers, things are about to get really, really exciting. You'll see in mid-November, fungi colonize the soil. And I emphasize the word colonize here. In fact, the world's largest organism is a honey mushroom mycelium that covers four square miles in Oregon and is estimated to be a few thousand years old, making it one of the oldest living organisms. On November 20th, fish swim through the sea. The evolution of these first vertebrates might not seem that interesting until you realize that our very distant great-grandparents were these small, meek, jawless fish. There are still a few of these primitive species alive today, such as lampreys and hagfish. Two days later, on November 22nd, land plants emerge. I'm actually surprised that they didn't sprout up sooner on this timeline, but it makes sense that green algae pools would have to dry out first in order for the dry spores to spread across the land. On November 24th, arthropods crawl across the land. Transitioning from water to land, their jointed exoskeletons help prevent them from drying out. Not surprisingly, they are the most successful phylum on the planet in terms of population size. And because they are so numerous, perhaps they should become a staple in our kitchen pantries. Moving to December, you'll see amphibians jump onto the scene. Okay, so they didn't exactly jump on the scene, but you know how the story goes. Tetrapods crawled out of the water, gulped for air, and then amphibians evolved from tetrapods. You wouldn't think it, but for tens of millions of years, amphibians were the dominant land. A few days later, reptiles emerge and dominate. Their thicker skins and semi-permeable eggs allow reptiles to leave bodies of water behind and free to adventure deep into dry land, unlike amphibians who still to this day have to stay near water to lay their eggs. Just a few days later, dinosaurs will appear. And on December 13th, mammals enter the fray. Nocturnal mouse-like creatures scampered among tree branches and found their niche as insectivores. The name Mammalia was coined by Carl Linnaeus in 1758 and derived from the Latin mamma, which means teat. On December 18th, birds evolved from carnivorous dinosaurs. The first birds probably only had a few feathers, teeth, and a long bony tail. After the dinosaurs go extinct, birds will command control of the skies with the largest birds having wingspans about 20 feet long. 65 million years ago, dinosaurs are wiped out as we all know. They dominated the scene for two full weeks though, which was a pretty good run for them. We finally reached New Year's Eve, when at 11.30 a.m., 
Hominids will walk on two limbs and explore the savanna landscape. Around this time, the human brain size jumped from 65% average modern capacity to 90% and allowed hominids to create more symmetrical tools. In the hour before midnight, Neanderthals appear. And then at 11.36 p.m., Homo sapiens evolved. For thousands of years, the two species lived alongside each other. And even though rare, did interbreed, which means some of us actually have a litter Neanderthal in us. In the last minute before the new year, agriculture takes root in Egypt and Iran, where wild barley, wheat, and lentils were cultivated around 9,800 years ago. At Biomimicry 3.8, we're hoping that soon our modern agriculture will mimic how prairies produce food over the long haul. In the last two seconds, the Industrial Revolution occurs. Since we're only 24 minutes old in the big scheme of things, we're really still running amok on Earth like toddlers. We still have a lot to learn, but that's okay, there's time because the sun doesn't burn out for a whole other calendar year plus a couple months. So start your stopwatch. In the next two seconds, I think humans will learn to fit in. Our cities and buildings will be generous and perform ecosystem services just like the trees do. We've already had the blueprint for a sustainable world because it's already existed. It's existed since life's birthday 3.8 billion years ago.